Drawing a dog's nose can vary depending on the type of dog, whichever breed you end up drawing. So let's go ahead and take a look at the different types of dog noses. This nose doesn't have a lot of color to it, it's just pretty much plain. So you want to start out with the nostrils. I don't always start out drawing the nostrils first, but it is good to have an outline to begin with before you do anything else. That's super important to make sure that you understand where everything is located proportionately. So once that's done, then you want to start out with a light first layer. You can use any sort of darker gray color you can even use a lighter gray if the um, if the nose has a lighter tone to it but this one has a little bit darker but it's just very basic colors more warm grays than anything else so start out with this layer and start to draw around some of these key features and leave room for the highlights as much as possible so what I mean by that is the lighter parts you definitely want to draw lighter or just leave those alone until last. Once that's done, then you can start to draw the nostrils. Just use straight black for the nostrils. Just about every single portrait, I use only black in that area because it is very much pitch black. Once that is done, there's always this middle part of the nose that has this line that goes straight down. So you want to draw that, but you can even wait until it's the last step as well. But sometimes it helps to understand proportionally where everything's located if you draw that ahead of time. And then using neutral tones to start to warm up or cool down some areas and start to draw kind of where the shaded areas are the most. And drawing very lightly in the areas that are more highlighted, more lighter. That way you can draw the value that is all around the nose. So you can see that it's darker around the nostrils and then it gets lighter as you go towards the top and even on the outside of the nose there, it's a little bit lighter as well. So pay attention to where the highlights and the lowlights are that's going to really make or break your portrait. Once you've got a good foundation down, let's go ahead and burnish. Now burnishing is a method by using heavier pressure to create a waxy coating. And this can be done on top of a couple of layers. And what that does is it helps to blend what's there. I always like to use lighter colors to do so or, or mid-tone colors, especially in darker areas. So it really helps to blend what's already there to begin with. And then once that's done, you can still see there's a little bit of texture that's super important for noses because almost all noses have some sort of texture to it. So that's okay if it does. This one is very different. This is upside down. So trying to draw a nose upside down is just kind of difficult because you have to think about the shapes and not think about the location and what it's supposed to really look like. So of course, draw the nostril first and definitely don't have to use heavy pressure just yet for that. But then you can start to bring in your first couple of layers and I am using a warmer tone for this one, which is a dark sepia. And blending between warm tones and cool tones is very important. I talk about it all the time, but it is really important because you want to incorporate as many variety of values and colors 
as possible without it without it looking too much like a rainbow if that makes sense <laughs> so bringing in some different um, grays in there and then some different let's say like lighter blues pale blues it's gonna really help brighten up the highlights and darken the low lights with the darker grays I do like to use black last as much as possible because once you have the black down you it's really hard to um, lift it up erase it and I don't like how cool the black looks so I like to have a little bit of depth to it first and then add the black on top because that'll really help to warm up some of those sections and also darken and start to blend and make it look more cohesive overall now as you can see I'm using a lighter gray to burnish some of these areas and I did leave room for the highlighted parts and I'll blend all of that together using a mixture of lighter grays and more mid-tone grays so you'll see towards the end how that comes out This nose is one of the most detailed noses I've done on a pet portrait. So I really wanted to incorporate this in here because I think that when you're drawing larger, you definitely have more room for error as well as detail. So on the plus side, it is a lot better because you do get a lot of detail in there and you can really add some depth so your first layer you want to use just a lighter gray of some sort and most noses have grays in there and a little bit of brown there are some that have more reds in there but we'll um, talk about that one later on in this video so you can use a medium blue color to bring in a little bit of that blue tone instead of using a very pale blue I'm using a medium one because I wanted to incorporate more blues in there than just that light color because it sometimes it can come out more white than blue depending on the um, depending on the subject really. So this definitely had more blues hinted in there. And then your second layer needs to be maybe a little bit of a darker gray color or it can even be the same gray but really you're just building up those layers and starting to um, burnish some of those areas and don't forget about leaving room for the highlighted areas and thinking about where the shading really is so for this most of the time I'd say on top of the nostril there is quite a bit of a darker shade happening and then it starts to blend and get lighter and then this part's really fun so drawing small irregular circles so just different little shapes almost like natural stone shapes this is really important for adding the details when it comes to larger portraits I know it can be very tedious but it really does help in the long run to make the nose look more like the actual picture so when you're drawing this 
want to just draw lightly in the highlighted areas, draw a little bit heavier pressure in the darker areas, and repeat the same steps throughout the whole nose. But I'm just wanting to show you, at least for this top part, once I completed that top part, how you apply it. And just be patient and let it happen. And it's okay if it looks uneven, you know, some heavier pressure in some areas and lighter in others, because that's exactly what it's supposed to look like. It's not supposed to look completely even or um, symmetrical at all. And then once you have that, then you can actually draw a little bit of shading over the top of some of those areas. Then that really just ties it all together once you have, once you've darkened some of those areas. So it's really more about getting that texture in, not necessarily about the detail itself. This bottom half is the same exact methods. So your first layer is gonna be some sort of bluish tone. And it doesn't always have to be blue, but it can be something that is just more of a gray, a light gray of some sort. And then there is a little bit of a warm tone, so I'm applying a little bit of this um, beautiful peachy skin tone color right in the highlighted areas underneath the nose. Then once that's done, you can apply a warm gray color to the uh, bottom half here. And it doesn't have to be exactly one direction per se, but I do like to try to make everything in one direction as much as possible because it makes it easier in terms of texture as you're building up to have everything in one direction. You can either do that or small concentric circles something like that to build up the layers but then using the black here starting to darken it up but then I'll also add detail later on such as the um, little small irregular shaped circles but right now we're just trying to build up the colors so the shading more than anything else Now it's time to darken the nostrils. See, I don't always darken the nostrils first. I really just like to outline it first and then build up. That way, if I make any mistakes, I can just erase and not have to erase some of the nostril itself because it is very just pitch black. And I wanna make sure that I can still make any adjustments that I can while I'm going throughout and then do the straight up black later on. I did leave room for the highlights and as I'm kind of blending it all in together I'm just trying to make sure that I'm getting the right colors first before going in and darkening everything else up and getting it all even. So these highlights are pretty bright so I'm trying to just really get it to look more blended using mid-tones and then use uh, brighter colors for in the highlights itself. 
there is a line in between the nostrils so I'm bringing that in and I'm also going to draw some of the little cracks that are at the bottom so it's not a hundred percent like the little dark irregular circles but there are some other details like cracks and it almost looks like uh, you know a dry desert kind of texture and so towards the bottom it is going to look a little bit different than the top there but before I do all that I want to make sure that I have everything finished before I start to bring in those kind of details and then use some white color pencil to draw in a little bit of the highlights and then after all of that I will use a slice tool to draw in the uh, details such as the little cracks and everything that I was talking about there and it really starts to bring in some of those good highlights but you want to make sure you have enough layers to be able to do so so when it's really this dark you can use that slice tool to draw basically edge away and do the highlighted the um, opposite effect as the top is I did mention it earlier so there is such a thing as a pink nose so your first layer you want to use a neutral uh, some sort of like neutral pink color it can be a little bit more of like a skin tone kind of color and just start to kind of build up and also use a little bit of um, this is almost like a purpley gray color so between a little bit of pinks a little bit of purple in there and then you'll use um, even just like a regular lighter pink some sort of like flesh tone that's super important is to have like a pinky flesh tone color to build on top it almost looks like a pig's nose at that point but it will not once you um, start to add layers and then I use uh, black to do the nostrils so this part it was easier just to go ahead and apply the nostrils because I knew where they were located. It's a much smaller portrait, so it was easier to apply them for first after a couple of layers. And then you start to darken. So you want to make sure that you're um, looking at it and seeing where's the highlights, where's the lowlights, where's all that detail and the texture that's in there. And also draw that little middle line that goes up so that you kind of have a better understanding as to where the shading is and I'm just using like a um, you know like a darker brown color to do the shading and then bring in a warmer brown color almost like a red toned brown just for some areas that way it does have a little bit of that reddish tone in there and then go back to that darker brown and start to build up that shading super super important now you can also burnish using that mid-tone gray it's kind of like a um, mid-tone purpley gray color and then in the highlights you can use a lighter color like a light pink or a light yellow and just kind of draw and do like a little bit of a burnishing effect as well and then blend it with that pink color so you could see now um, you know where the highlights are and where the lowlights are and then using a darker color you can kind of add a little bit of texture at the same exact time by using that darker color and just leaving room for those little highlights that we already applied before really hope that this helped you out please do not forget to like and subscribe and check out my how to draw 
your own pet portrait program down in the descriptions below. Learn to draw miniature color pencil portraits. The best part about drawing these miniature portraits is I can get them done in a very reasonable time without being so intimidated of drawing so large. My students have absolutely loved getting to draw these little portraits because they feel like they can actually get something accomplished within a reasonable amount of time. Each one takes no more than about two to three hours, so you will have an awesome portrait by the end of the day. These are beginner friendly and great for ages 12 and up. At the bottom of the video, I give you what pencil I use so that you're never confused and I will tell you every step that needs to be taken. So if you are just wanting to have fun one day and just play around, then you can sign up for the Patreon membership that is only $11 a month and you can cancel at any time. Learn to draw your own pet. This is an eight week program where you get to learn to draw all sorts of different animal fur, such as different types of curly fur, striped fur, different colored fur as well, such as brown or black, and different animal features, as well as towards the end, you'll get to follow along a full pet portrait tutorial so that the very end, you will get to draw your own pet with confidence. Sign up today to be put on the waitlist.